Uh, when, when we were, were doing uh, this uh, higher education service, um, I asked my friend Oscar, he's, he's not just a, a director at Biola, he's, he's my friend. He's my friend and um, he's, he's got a heart for, for people, he's got a heart for, for pastors, he's, he has a heart for me, he has a heart for the church, and he has a heart for academia. And today, and you know what's crazy about it, it's, it's not only is he a believer, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and he comes from the Hispanic descent. Those two combinations, <laughs> they're a threat to the enemy. Come on, somebody. And so without further ado, please help me welcome to this stage, preaching the word of God, Oscar Merlo. Come on, let's give her Pastor Robert too, amen? He's one of the best pastors in the entire United States, and believe me when I tell you that. But beyond that, this is a church that loves Jesus. This is a church that loves people. This is a church that loves education. This is a church that loves the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We know you are at work here. We know that you are at work already, oh God. We know that you're doing mighty things in the midst of both church, Father. And every seed that has been planted, oh Father, make it turn into a soul. Make it turn into a, into a succeed, Lord. Let, let let it let it flourish into 15,000 different souls almighty God we pray oh Jesus that you will do mighty things through these students and through this church in your name we pray amen and amen you may be seated down but before you do so won't you hug somebody say what's up y'all looking good y'all smell you put on your cologne you took a good shower it's so good to see you so wonderful to see you I'm excited to be here so thankful I'm going to rush right into this thing because I got the time limit right in front of me and I know that God has a word for you today. Are you ready for the word of God? I'm ready for the word of God. I mean, these days have been really, really days of very different kinds of emotions, right? Full of complexities. I mean, suffering all over the world. We've seen devastating natural as well as human caused things that have devastated the heart of people. And you know what? Beyond that, the Word of God says that we are to cry with those who are suffering. We are to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. So today our hearts also remember those that have suffered in Buffalo, in Uvalde, and even recently just uh, across in, 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 in Pakistan. You know, devastating things that are happening. Let us not forget that we're a church that also sees the world, loves the world, and we want to get to the world. We are a church that loves Jesus and loves you. And thank you for taking the time and opportunity to be here. We know you have so many options. You that are tuning in, as well as you that are here, you could have been anywhere else. At the beach, such a wonderful day to be at the beach. But you decided to be here and hear the word of God. So I want to say thank you for giving us the opportunity, as well as Pastor Robert and Pastor Liz, for allowing me to just share this pulpit. And, and you know, I'm an academic evangelist, so it's a it, weird, weird kind of combination there. But I love academia, yet I love, for me, it's better to throw, throw, throw me in the midst of a sea of, of, of sinners, and that's where I thrive. You know, that's, that's what God has called me to do, just to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm married to a beautiful woman named Lexa Merlot. She's going to come to the 12 o'clock service. Got two beautiful daughters, Priscilla. Is 21 and uh, uh, well, 22, and Danae is 19. And uh, I'm just so excited that they also could go with me. We love eating, as you could tell. You know, I try to, uh, actually, I'm on, I'm on pound number, number 15. I lost 15 pounds during this summer, right? Yes. Yes, 15 pounds, but I gained three this week. I don't know what happened there. But some of you guys may know, you know, we might need to go through one of those intermediate diets as we enter the week. But I was born in Honduras, and uh, it's a beautiful country. Any Hondureños here? Joe, bueno, oye, que pesa, de verdad. Le gustan las baleadas? Ah, y la yuca, la yuca con chicharrón y la sopa de caracol y guatane con su y todo eso. Okay, good. We got, got one more. Well, Robert got one more, right? We got one more. One more for Jesus, right? So, as I was thinking about you, you know, and thinking about what to preach, I was reminded of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And I'm going to go quickly through these things. And Ecclesiastes says that there's time for everything. There's a time for cry, a time for, a time for rejoicing, a time to think, a time to be quiet. And from there we draw that there's a time for celebration. 
And that's why we are celebrating our students here today because they are worthy to be celebrated. And then I was thinking about what to speak to them about and what to speak to you that are sitting here today. And the Spirit draw me to the wisdom words of my grandmother, mi abuelita. Abuelita Lupita me dio varios consejos. She gave me a couple of advices before I left Honduras. And that's really what I want to share with you. It's just some homemade cooking, <laughs> word of God kind of deal that God, grandma gave to me as I was, you know, eight years old leaving Honduras and coming to the United States. What that has made me is a person with multiple passports and multiple cultures. So I love to travel to Europe or to any place in the world and just kind of show them my different kinds of passport, report, re, 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 you know, re, representing where I'm from. If I'm in Cuba, I'm from Honduras, and I take my Honduran passports. If I'm in Venezuela, I take my Honduran passport. But if, if I'm in the Middle East, depending what country I'm in, it would mainly be more of Latin American, you know, but it, it just kind of made me embrace all who I am and all who, all who you are as an individual and, and that we have roots. But those roots that we have are spiritual as well. And those roots that we have are grounded on spiritual truth. And that's basically what I want to share with you today. I want to share with you four propositions or four advices for life after graduation or what what faces life, and these are four practical advices. Number one, I love when Adrian came up and he talked about seeking God with all of your heart. Because that's point number one. Graduates, amigos that are here, friends and family, my first advice for you as you graduate and do life, I mean, you will do life, and life can become difficult. Therefore, you ought to love life. You are, to de you, uh, you are to enjoy and be delighted in life because life will hit you with some really, really crazy stuff, right? And when life hits us, you know, we need to be able to be grounded. And this first proposition for you is seek the Lord with all your heart. Number one, I want you to take out your phones. Yes, we could take out our phones here in this service. And I want you to write this. I want you to write, I, 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 I didn't make the notes that usually we get. Well, hasn't it been wonderful to hear Pastor Robert teach the last couple of weeks? I mean, you've been really a blessing for us. I mean, that, that message about the Lila, man, that was just like, bomb. You know, where do we put our heads, you know? What are voices are we hearing? So what I want you to know is now in your phone, write in point number one, seek God with all of your heart. Seek God with all of your heart. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and justice, and all these things will be added unto you. The key here in this verse is to seek, and I love what Adrian was saying, was to engage, to involve, and to, what was the third one? Involved, engage, I mean, uh, include, involve, and engage, Right? That's basically the, 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 the advice that I, wanna, that I want to reemphasize, that we ought to seek God with all of the heart. But it's a posture, a posture of seeking God's kingdom of justice. Isaiah is full of the descriptions of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of justice. And God, the word that usually is translated is righteousness, but the word that truly is at the root is his justice. When we seek God and we seek the kingdom of his justice, then we posture ourselves into blessings to come. What is then the main objective of life? Many propositions are going to tell you many different things. You know, pursue richness, pursue a career, pursue something that's going to return an investment for you, something greater. But I want to propose to you something simple yet profound. The main objective of life is to turn your heart towards God. The main objective of God is to know God with all of your heart. Is to know God. To, when you know God, you will understand and will be able to know yourself better. You want to know who God is? You will discover that he is kind, that he is love, that he is merciful, that he has justice, that he protects, that he is there with you. And then you will begin to understand more about who you are as an individual of what your characteristics are and what you are designed to do. So the more we seek him, the more we will come to know him. You want to know God? Seek God. 
in the areas of traditions, you know, we practice spiritual disciplines. We practice discipleship. We practice things that will help us to seek God. Take two, three minutes every day to think about God. As a matter of fact, let me be as practical as this. Bring out a chair, sit down, quiet your mind, and begin a conversation. Seeking God is to have a conversation with the creator of your life. Seeking God is to just begin to say, God, help me to know you. Quiet my mind and help me to see how lovely and beautiful you are. Help me to understand all of the complexities that I'm going through. And as you sit there and you begin to contemplate, and as you begin to quiet down, you'll discover a beautiful relationship that you will start with God. So we seek God in different kinds of postures. The posture that I want to introduce you to is a posture of meekness and a posture of humbleness when we seek God. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12 it says, Then you will call on me and seek me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me, and you will seek me with all of your heart. So the posture of seeking God is to seek him with all of our heart. And the heart is an organ that we have in which, scientifically speaking, all of our emotions sit. All of the things that we have in our hearts are to seek God. The emotions that we have. So as a Latino, Latin American, emotional individual that I am, my heart is to love God with all of his strength and all of his mind. So seek him with all of your heart. So number one, seek the Lord with all of your heart. Simple. Abuelita told me, that's the name that she used to call me. Seek God with all of your heart. And when you practice that throughout life, no matter how old you are, you'll find yourself that that works. This is not a formula kind of a deal because it's hard to seek God when the report comes and it's not a good report, right? It's hard to say, God, I seek you with all my heart when, you know, problems are going all over. It's hard to seek God even for some of you that are here today, maybe even forcefully. It's hard to seek God because life is shattering all around you. But let me tell you, when you posture your heart in a, in a, in a, in a journey of seeking the Lord, life will, will, will become clarified. No matter how much ambiguity you go to, how much cloudiness are going through your life, if you're seeking God step by step, you'll be able to determine, you'll be able to discern that God is there with you. Number two, continue your education. I come from a family that always told me, continue your education. Grandma lived to be 96 years old. And she could have gone for a very long time, but then she became very, de very, very ill. But grandma always told me, Oscarito, continue your education. So number one, you seek God. Number two, write down in your phone, continue your education. Continue your education. You think that maybe because you achieved a high school diploma, beautiful, wonderful, well, it, it, it's it. Or you achieved a, 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 a bachelor's degree or you have achieved a master's degree or even a PhD or a doctorate degree or what, whatever degree, that, that that's it. Every one of us will need to continue our education. Whether you are a specialized real estate agent, whether you are someone that is working in finance or someone that is working in, in manufacturing or in some kind of, of, of world of production, you will need to continue your education. Paul tells Timothy, in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13 through 15, but you remain firm in what you have learned and which you have conceived because you know you learned it from. From your childhood you have known the Holy Scripture which are able to give you the wisdom necessary for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ so that the servant of God may be fully equipped for every good work. Notice what Paul is saying. Remain in what you have learned and from those who you learned it from. In other words, remain since you're a child in the word that you have learned in Sunday school, in the classes that you have taken. Remain in those words because those words will sustain you and they will become part of you throughout life. And remember that you learned it 
from. Abuelita used to sit me down and teach me the word of God. And she used to taught me in a way that was practical for her. As a matter of fact, she never had a formal education. She never went to kindergarten or first grade. She never knew. She didn't know how to, how to read until she was converted and Jesus came into her life. She learned to read in her Bible. And that was the only framework that she had. But she was the most wisest person that I ever met up till today. Abuelita continued her education at her older age and years, and she continued to thrive. She became the first radio evangelist in Honduras. Can you believe that? Abuelita continued to preach the word. She used to preach crusades. She used to take me when I was six years old and set me up in a stone and gave me this open mic and say, you preach now, Oscar. And I'm like, okay, what do I do? But Abuelita would t teach me the word of God. She would teach me about spiritual formation. I mean, she would teach me about the spiritual world. She never read Peter Wagner or any of these people that later on became very famous with all of their writings. But she used to have a very profound spiritual life. So in other words, Abuelita did what Mark Twain says. Mark Twain said, I will never let my studies interfere with my education. Mark Twain said again, I will never let my studies interfere with my education. What Twain was saying is that we will learn much more outside of the classroom, at least about life and wisdom. Did you hear that? Just because you have arrived, because you got a degree, or because you have this, you think that you won't be able to be educated or taught, but those people that are around you, let me even tell you further, you want to know God? Get close to an old person. That all they know is Jesus' faithfulness. You want to know God? Get close to the older people that are around you. Get close to your abuelita. Get close to that person. That all they know is the faithfulness in Jesus Christ. Get close to them and you will be able to see an incarnated faith that has sustained them throughout life. That has been with them throughout the difficulty. That they have been in there. Get close to one of those people and tell me if there is no wisdom if there is no rootedness, if there isn't something stubborn about their faith that we much need today like never before. I need that abuelita's faith like never before. I need my grandma's faith like never before. It seems today that we got this kind of faith that it's light, either blue or yellow. You ever seen that kind of sugar? that you put inside of your coffee that's fake sugar. I don't need no fake sugar about my faith. I need the raw stuff. I need that kind of a faith that's going to sustain me. And I find that in the wisdom of our abuelitas and our mothers and our fathers. Aristotle, a famous philosopher, said that educating the mind without educating the heart is not education at all. Educating the mind without educating the heart is not education at all. So in other words, my friends that are graduating and moving about life, there is no script about life. There's nothing already said. This is what you do. You do step one, step two, and all the way to step seven. So you'll be able to figure out how it is that you are going to be a good parent. There is, there is no formula. There's no formula about all these things that we have. When we do life, all we have to do is train our hearts. And if we train our hearts to love God first, believe me, you'll be able to like identify that obstacle. <laughs> you'll be able to say, if I measure this consequence, it's going to take me this route. If I measure it this way, it's going to take me that route. But when you train your heart... When you train your heart in the ways of the Lord, you have this inner wisdom, this outer wisdom, this wisdom that comes from life itself. I got to move fast. I got to move fast through here. One of the verses that Abuelita gave me before I came to the United States was Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. As a matter of fact, she had me memorize it. It said, she said, Oscarito, dime Josué 1, 8 y 9. 
Mira que te mando que te esfuerces y seas valiente No temas ni desmayes porque Jehová tu Dios estará contigo Donde quiera que tú vayas Nunca se apartará de tu boca este libro de la ley Sino que meditarás en él de día y de noche Para que hagas conforme a lo que en él está escrito Y entonces harás prosperar tu camino I was seven years old You could look it up Joshua chapter 8 verse 9 It's a powerful verse It's a verse that says, this book of the law shall never depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night and will keep you according to what is written in it because you will make your way prosperous and everything you will do will turn out well for you. Look, I am commanding you to be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed for your Lord, your God will be with you wherever you go. So... <laughs> If you train your heart wherever you go, be brave. But be brave in that kind of a scripture. Be brave in your heart. So as we seek God, our, our heart is going to seek God, but our heart needs to be strengthened. In what do our heart needs to be strengthened? In this passage. In this passage that's telling us how to go about life. Wherever you go, keep, wherever you go, keep doing accordingly to the book. Even if it sounds outdated or even if it sounds like, man, this is a little traditional. Let me tell you, that traditional book, that according to has saved me from a lot of trouble. <laughs> that according to has helped me to have measures and boundaries that I need to have in life. So whatever you want, you want to be prosper? Yeah. Invest in cryptocurrency. <laughs> you want to be prosperous? Invest in the word of God. It's a guarantee ROI. <laughs> it's a guarantee ROI. I mean, it's going to work better than your 403B or your 401K or any kind of investment that you will have. If you invest in the Word of God, you'll be able to walk strong in Jesus. Number three, I got a lot of other stuff, but I got to move on. Number three, focus on loving God and loving people. So write that down. Focus on loving God and loving people. You people that are over there online, focus on loving God and loving people. The disciple Matthew asked Jesus, who was the wisest teacher who ever walked the earth, Master, what is the greatest commandment of the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with what? With all your heart with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God with all your mind, with all of your heart, with all of your soul. So with my intellect, with the way that I'm going to, uh, with the disciplines that I'm going to develop, with all of the passion of my heart and feelings, but with the soul, with the will, and everything that is me as a person, love God with, with holistically, with all of your heart, but also love your neighbor, regardless of their political ideology. Love your neighbor. Regardless whether they're Republicans or Democrats, love your neighbor. Regardless of their race, regardless of the color of their skin, regardless of the way that we look, we ought to love our neighbor. Let both church be one of those churches that people come in here and they are known because we love them. Because we love them with all of our hearts. The more we love him, the more we love people. <laughs> you got an issue with people? Love Jesus more. The more we love God, regardless of the vocation that we do, let us remember that those vocations are meant so that we can serve people. We can bless people by being kind, by giving them the best version of, of who we are. We love people by being a prophetic voice of justice. When they are marginalized, when people are dispossessed, when people are exploited, we love God more that way. We love people by being a voice for the unprotected in society. Be bold to love then. Be bold to love. Let love come out of your, of your skin and, and let that sweat be the love of Jesus that melts the heart of those people today that are suffering the most. Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself and everything you do for these little ones you have done for me. So by loving people, 
We advance the common good. By loving people, we advance human rights. By loving people, we can change and transform the world. But let me tell you this. Education doesn't change the world. It changes the people who will change the world. Education doesn't change the world. It changes the people that will change the world. But can you imagine if those people that are educated, that can change the world, are anointed of the Holy Spirit, are filled of God? Can you imagine what happens? Not only do I have the mind, but I also have the spirit. Not only can I operate in the seats of intellectuality in academia, but I can operate also in the spirit. You know what? I could call upon the angels when I'm in that meeting. I could say, God, anoint me for this particular time and for this particular issue. So finally, two more, two more, three, two or three more thoughts. Number four, this you're going to love. So number one, you love God with your heart. Number two, continue education. And then number three, was focused on loving God, loving people. Number four, go to work. <laughs> it's healthy for you. Go to work. Why are you just like, okay, I got educated. Now I'm going to be like a... Just chill on the sofa, you know, let the loans come through. And no, 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 no. Paul speaks to the Thessalonians in chapter 3, verse 7, 3 to 13. Look, man, he says to them, I've heard of some of you guys I ain't working. You're living disorderly. What's going on? And let me tell you, I could not, if I, if we choose to work and let those that don't work, don't eat. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, right? So instead of, Invest in your time in gossiping. That's what the Word of God says. You can read it when you get home. Instead of, I mean, that doesn't happen at Vos Church. I know we, we, we don't gossip. We don't, we don't do that. We, 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 we just love on people, right? We don't spend our time in like, hey, did you see what happened to that guy in my wreck city? Did you see what happened to that hermana and that hermano? Did you see what happened to this? Did you hear me? Stop! I don't know why I'm putting my hand in this issue right now. Stop. Focus on loving God. And don't be tired of doing good. Carry your load. It's healthy for you. It's healthy for your family. Have balance in your life. Develop a theology of work that is responsibility. Develop a theology of work that is redeeming. Develop a theology of work that helps you to be a good administrator. Develop a theology of work that gives you time of balance of Sabbath. Some of you guys need a vacation urgently. When is the last time the Vos Church sent our pastors out for a vacation? He didn't tell me to tell me that. Tell that. He works hard. We all work hard. We all need a vacation. But I think that we should be a church that also takes care of our pastors. You're not married to your work. Let me repeat that. You are married to your spouse. <laughs> you don't have any emotional contract with your job. You have a financial contract. You do not have a psychological contract with your work. You have an intellectual commitment that seeks results. And I remind you that if there is no opportunities being open at work, make your own door. Make your own door. Open up your own business. Do whatever it is so you could achieve success. But as I look around my room here today, I'm looking at successful people that are going to move forward, that are going to be anointed in the Spirit, that are going to do great things for Jesus. Do you believe that? Why don't you stand up and let me remind you again of the story of this 13-year-old boy. His name was Bessalel. I discovered pastor this story and, and his name means the shadow of God. Bessalel's story is the shadow of God. And at 13 years old, the Bible says that he was chosen by God to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And he was filled with wisdom and he was filled with, uh, with, with, with many skills. The Bible says that he was filled with, with understanding and with knowledge and the skills. It's interesting to me. That this last point and reflects the life of a young man that 
that's the, the, the number one really underpinning of all of this. That to seek the Lord with all of our, our heart, it's a it's good thing that we continue our education. It's fantastic that we center a loving God when, and with all our minds, soul, and people as well. That we work, that we get out of our butts and we start working. It's, 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 it's healthy. But to be filled with the Holy Spirit is the number one thing for me. The scripture says that this young man was not a priest. He was not even a prophet. He didn't even held a religious role that qualifies everyone in this room, right? That qualifies all of us in this room. But instead, he was a craftsman that knew God by seeking the divine shadow that is by seeing only God's work and not God himself like Moses did but he was able to through the plans through the vision understand God in a more profound way than many many other people in his generation in other words he knew God through the plans that had been given want to know God know the plan want to know God know the plan want to know God's goodness know the plan want to know your future know the plan want to know hope know the plan for I know the plans that I have for you says the Lord plans to prosper you plans to bless you plans to give you a future plans for goodness for you those are the plans that God has for you you want to know your future know the plan you want to know your future know the plan is there someone here that is hungry to know the plan to know the god of the plan to understand the god of the plan you must open up the heart the mind the life to wisdom god here is telling you this is a moment to know your plan with seriousness of what the future holds for you and with knowledge conscious knowledge that that plan it's a good plan Do you believe that say it's a good plan it's a plan to give me a future it's a plan to give me the best opportunities that God has put out there for me. Do you want those plans? No, the plan. In other words, the plan within the plan is to know Jesus. So if there's someone here today that doesn't know Jesus, that's where you start. That's the plan within the plan. Okay? That's the plan within the plan. The second thing is those people here the one of future, a prosperous future. The one to understand and unveil those plans that God has for you. This is a calling for you as well. So I'm talking to two audiences today. Maybe within that audience of the second plan, you have not been walking in the plan that God has called you to walk in because you've been seeking all, all kinds of other plans. You, you've been seeking the plan that somebody else designed for you. Maybe an individual development plan that your corporate put together for you and, and that's good but, but maybe you have decided that you know what I, I don't need that but, but I'm calling you here as well today so if you're in this audience today I want you to close your eyes and you don't know the plan within the plan let me tell you the plan of the master planner was to have you here today and I want you to repeat this prayer with me say Lord Jesus I want to know you as my personal savior I take you as the master planner of my life and I turn over to you my life and my fears and I give you all of this who I am right now I receive you as my savior I receive you as the one that orders my steps and unveils the plans for me with eyes closed I want to see 
the person that did these prayers for the first time. Raise your hand up like this. Just Lord blessings to you.